Ladies and gentlemen, reparations have not left the table and it still must be discussed even in this climate. In fact, this is the perfect climate to talk about it in. So this is USA Today, June 15th, 2020. You know, we have seen all of the marching in the streets and the crowds just growing by the thousands. And this should definitely inspire everybody in the Black community to get charged up once again about reparations. We don't need to see Black Lives Matter or no justice, no peace, hands up, no shoot, because what we are entitled to have nothing to do with a slogan that is being chanted in the street, but everything to do with a debt that's due to us. And the old tired argument about, well, you know, those slaves weren't around. Yeah, well, many of them Holocaust victims aren't around. And many of those natives that were buried in mass graves, they're not around either. So, you know, that just doesn't work. You know what I mean, y'all, it don't work. So as the demonstrations move on in America, it brings us back to one of the first things we were talking about last year when the subject matter of the Democratic candidates for president and we were raising reparations at a fever pitch. And we need to get back to that immediately. More progress needs to be made for the descendants of slaves in this country. One thing over the last few months that it has showed us that America has plenty of money. You know, when it comes down to COVID-19, they sure didn't have any problem finding trillions, did they? They didn't have problems finding trillions for stimulus money and proposing another $3 trillion for more stimulus. Didn't have no problem with that. So you should not have a problem with reparations, being that we are living in the day and time of anti-police and anti-racism protests going on in the country. Now, if we are just as small as you put it, 13% of the population, which we know that's a BS percentage, no one walking this earth in our community should be believing that. Then it should be very easy for you to give money to this small group of people, 13%. But we know you won't do it for many reasons, not because we don't have a good argument for it, we certainly do but it's the same systematic and institutional and the bias when it comes down to racism, the same thing we keep hearing. I tell you what, if you wanna see if white people in those streets protesting with you are really truly with you, talk to them about reparations. See if they will remain on those streets with you or leave. Talk to them about reparations. You'll see exactly where their minds are. Now, another thing that has popped up in the recent weeks is, you know, we suddenly become the face of COVID-19 without this country ever showing a shred of data. We have been asking for data since they made the accusation that we get it the most and they have not delivered on that data. So these folks expect us to take everything they say at face value. 
I ain't taking shit at no face value. Where are the raw numbers? Where are the raw numbers we've been asking for for weeks and you haven't delivered on in all this time? Why are we still waiting for that data if it's really true? And if we are getting it the most, that justifies us getting reparations even more. So we need more resources for the community so that we could battle COVID-19. We need federal funding. We need federal money, federal dollars. And no, we're not ashamed to demand those things. You've given it to everybody else. No, don't let these people try to make you feel like you shouldn't be asking for something. We should be asking. And in fact, you should be asking for it in your loudest voice. Head right programs and free land and everything they got. They got a lot of nerve even saying anything to us. So, ladies and gentlemen, because there are so many people out of work and they have already admitted that it's going to take 10 to 12 years to get this population back working again. And we know a big bulk of that unemployment is in the black community. So that being said, and we have been battling the hot with the highest unemployment in the country forever. So that is another reason why reparations would be necessary. Many black people still have to maintain homes and families and bills. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, I recently saw how Ice Cube came in the news talking about black people shouldn't pay taxes. I've been saying that since I was in my early 20s. <laughs> it's good to hear these things now, but I've been saying that stuff forever. You know, being that our people were the ones enslaved and actually built America, we shouldn't have to pay taxes up in here. I've been said that. So, ladies and gentlemen, if the community is so badly afflicted, then why are they just talking about these things? Why aren't they helping? And that should be a big question raised. Don't keep coming around us talking about we got something the most, but you're not doing anything to remedy it. So we have been disproportionately um, hit with all kinds of racism, poverty, and of course, without the biggest advancement in economics like many other groups in America. This government has gladly helped a lot of groups in this country, but refused to help us. To this very day, you can have the best of credit and you still can't get a loan to start a business within your own community. And you ever notice whenever they come up with program ideas for the black community is programs they can control. People that don't look like us, they are the ones that are gonna be controlling those programs. And I reject it each and every time. We don't need programs. We are in need of reparations. If programs were gonna help, we would have seen it by now. This country got a million and one programs. And I have not seen any of those programs help a living soul out of poverty. So no, programs are not what we need. So ladies and gentlemen, across many of the generations, for example, after African-Americans have been paying rent to landlords to keep a roof over their heads, only about 40% of African-Americans own their homes compared to 70% of whites, the simple inability to purchase a house and benefit from the appreciation in value has deprived so many of us in the community, you know? And see, that's how many of these white people have gained their assets. So you, they buy a house at five to $8,000, and then they are able to turn around and sell that house for a half a million dollars or even more. OK, when those same opportunities and housing have never been extended to the black community. OK. So. 
in the aftermath, and and by the way, you know, they keep trying to focus the attention away from why people are out in the street and protest, you know, the Kaepernick thing, you know, always try to take the reason away from, um, you know, take away from the reason and try to put it on something else, you know, oldest trick in the book. And that's exactly what they continue to do when it comes down to reparations. You know, they know it's something that we are owed, but let's focus on something else. No, you're not going to pull that one. We are going to stay on this subject, reparations now. So you know how these folks always like to take you to looting and rioting, but you know, one thing about this particular protest, there's tons of footage of white people in the crowds starting fires and looting and running in stores and running out with a bunch of items in their hands. We're seeing a lot of white people do that stuff. And, you know, and that's absolutely what they don't want to see. All right, so let's get to having a job. Having a job in America has always been a challenge in the Black community. Many people have accomplished getting good jobs. I'm not going to deny that. But we still have many that are underemployed, many that are working out here without decent benefits. And we still go through the first, you know, the last hire, first fired. When it comes time for layoffs, we are always heavily hit by those layoffs. So while the only systematic study of why people, um, you know, in, in the workforce always seem to be black people that miss out the most as far as keeping employment, while other groups, they don't grapple with that as much and they're not as concerned about being laid off like black people are consistently in this society. The lack of a living wage, that's another reason why reparations are pertinent in the black community. For too long, many black people still today, even especially your essential workers that are out here, they are working very low wage jobs that are considered essential. And these folks are putting their lives on the line to serve a very ungrateful public. These workers have been spat on. We have seen in videos folks go into stores where they're working their behinds off and want to go near them and start coughing and starting all kinds of altercations with these folks that are essential workers. They have a lack of respect for whatever service we provide for the country, you know, it's very equivalent to our people going off to war and coming home and getting lynched in their uniform. But somebody like Drew Brees want to tell us about his grandfather, <laughs> the, the nerve. One other thing um, reparations will do, it will certainly stimulate a dead economy because America's economy is dead. Let's be real. You have not seen an economy that even halfway looked like something since February. February was the last full month, and that's the shortest month of the year, that we seen America with a good working economy. We haven't seen that since, and we're now in June. And even with many of the businesses reopening, those businesses are complaining that the customers have not come back. So essentially, they're going to have to make a hard decision to fight through this whole thing and keep their businesses open with not without making the revenue that they once made before or shut down shop and go back home. Ultimately, they're going to have to do it anyway. Too many people will get sick. So, ladies and gentlemen, reparations given to the Japanese, Native American Indians, the Jews, and many people throughout the years, even the Italians, that got hung 
in this country, they were able to get reparations. And I did that story over a year ago. So ladies and gentlemen, we need Congress in this country to stop focusing on things that we don't give a shit about and focus on what we do care about. And that are the reparations that we are entitled to. You know, they want to now unleash all these gatherings and get on their knees and talk about this and talk about that, but none of those things lead to reparations. So if you really want your economy back and you really want to do something genuinely for the black community, well, this is what you do. Now, Nike just added Juneteenth to their company holiday. We don't need that. If you want to do anything for us, Nike, set up a fund for reparations for the black community and have other corporations around this country, which we are largely responsible for your existence. If it wasn't for slave money, you wouldn't have it. So y'all put together a fund, save up trillions of dollars in that fund, multiple corporations and banks and hospitals and universities. You can all pull your money together and make sure the black community gets the money. If you want to help us, there you go. A quick way to help us without delay. So America got the money. If we saw them get the money for other things, we know they got the money for this. Reparations now. Reparations forever. Reparations for years to come. That's all we need to hear. All the other stuff, we don't care. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.